Hey folks, Jeff Burns here from Pragmatic Works with another edition of Azure Every Day. Today, I want to talk to you about using Databricks with uh, custom libraries. So Databricks as it stands comes out of the gate with a whole host of curated libraries that they have added into the runtime that you do not need to pull in. They're there available for you to use. There's Python, R, Scala, and Java libraries, and you can get all those from the release notes in the system environment section. But it's pretty common for us to need to add in custom code of one sort or another. So I want to walk through you through with you in a couple minutes here the three ways that you can load in custom libraries into Databricks. There's cluster, workspace, and notebook, and we're going to talk about the use cases for each of those. Let's talk about cluster first. So Databricks, as we know, runs on clusters. Here's my list of clusters here. I have two clusters in my nodes or in my uh, in my workspace here. I've got one that's running, one that's not. So for the one that's running, let me let's look at the libraries here, and you'll see that I've added a custom library or a, a library that was not part of the uh, runtime that I'm going to use to properly pull in Excel files. Very common use case: pulling in from Blob parsing those Excel files and putting them into a data frame so we can use them. The way I did this was I went to the install new. So I'm in the cluster libraries tab, went to install new, and you'll notice it pops up a screen that allows you to add custom packages in numerous ways. It could be something that you've created internally, maybe custom Java, custom Python code, or it could be in this case, it was a Maven script that I wanted to pull in where I just put in the coordinates according to the documentation from the, from the devs, and then I hit install. And that installs it for this cluster. So any user in my environment that is in Databricks connected to this cluster is gonna have access to this. So let me show you it in action. So in the, in the lake here, so I have a mount point to an Azure blob store, and you can see that I have an Excel file. If I run this with just out of the box processing, I get this, and it's the encoding in Excel that we run into, and it causes all sorts of problems. And if I did this via text, I get a different version of the same problem. But if I can use this Scala, this custom Scala import here, the one that I just uploaded, and a call it out of Scala, you can see that with this, I had to add two options to the code and I called out the format. But you can see here that now I can pull this into a data frame and I can use it, which is great. But what happens if you have multiple clusters in your environment and you want to make sure that you have the approved version of publicly available libraries, or you have the approved version of custom code, and you wanna be able to deploy that to multiple clusters. Well, the way you would do that is in the workspace, which is our second option here, and that is to go to your workspace and then do create and library. And it's gonna bring up a very similar screen here. What I found customers use this the most for is two things. One would be to manage their custom code that they use throughout their environment or where they are pulling in a Python or R package and they want a specific version. So in our case, let's say that we have an ML group that wants to use PyTorch which is not part of the regular install. And they wanna make sure that they use version 1.5. 1.6 at the time of this recording is the latest, but for numerous reasons, we wanna make sure that 1.5 is available to us. So when I put that into the, to the Pi Torch, here you go, create. And what it does is it actually loads it into the workspace, but it doesn't do anything with it yet. 
In order to do that, what you would need to do is you would need to uh, click on the clusters, and these are the clusters that are running, and click the ones that you want to apply that to, and then hit install. And it'll install the Torch 1.5 into those clusters that you, you selected. It's a great way to have a centralized place to keep all of your custom libraries. Now, the third and final one is fairly new. It's in public preview, and that is through a notebook. The best use case I've seen for this, uh, oh, and you need Databricks 7.1 runtime or better to be able to do the pip install or conda install. My advice to you, stick with pip. Pip is consistent throughout the products. Unless you have to have conda, I would use pip. So in this case, this would be great for prototyping or maybe some you know, packages that, that a machine learning person would want to use to see if they can get some better results, but they don't necessarily want to add it to the cluster of the workspace yet. So in this case, you can see here, I'm going to install um, Theano, which is a uh, ML package uh, that was developed in Montreal. And you can see I'm using the, uh, the pip wildcard here with the install and then the package name. And then this will send the command out. It's going to grab it from CRAN unless you specify otherwise. And then now, ta-da, we are in our, uh, we have in our notebook, we have this Theano package. And you can see here that I can run it. And this is all good. Now, just to show you, just demonstrate what's going on here. So if I go back to my data extraction here and I go all the way to the bottom and I try to at least, so this is just another notebook in my same cluster. And I try to run Theano, you'll see that it's given me the no module name. And the reason for that is because this, this notebook library is available only in this notebook. So there you have it, three ways to add custom code to Databricks, the cluster level, the workspace, and the notebook. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you or your company have any other needs around Azure, Databricks, Power Platform, Pragmatic Works is here for you. Don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks. Mm -hmm.